What's going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. Uh, yes, we are doing some standard today. Yes, it is Teamer Adventures and yes, we have a new setup. Are you enjoying all, all the cool stuff? Uh, so to to peel behind the curtain just a little bit, uh, my fiance and I are both working in the same room. Uh, she just got told very recently that she's going to be working virtually from home. Uh, instead of going back to school, she is a teacher. Um, and so we had to rearrange this room a little bit because we are limited on space. And so we gave her her space, which is that way. Uh, and so we got to kind of rework mine as well. And so uh, now we've got a nice little backdrop instead of just, you know, a black curtain or whatever it was before. So uh, pretty happy with that, but uh, also pretty happy to be playing with Teamer Adventures today. I really, really like this deck. This isn't one that I've played very recently. Um, and we've gotten some new additions in the sideboard in particular uh, with Corset 2021. So let's take a peek. Uh, obviously, a lot of this deck is kind of just standard out of the box. We've got our innkeepers to help us draw cards, Lucky Clovers to help us double up on these uh, adventures. Uh, we've got Fae of Wishes, which is going to help us pull things from the sideboard. Uh, kind of an interesting tech piece is Embrith Shieldbreaker. Uh, destroy target artifact for only one red. That can come in handy pretty quickly. Uh, and worst case scenario, it's just a little 2-1. It's nothing special, but uh, with, with the Innkeeper out or with a Lucky Clover out, you can really do some damage with this. Uh, we, of course, have Brazen Borrower here to bounce things and then give us a Flyer. Uh, Bone Crusher Giant to deal with creatures uh, or just shock our opponent for a bunch. Uh, Love Struck Beast puts out those little 1-1s one and then is a 5-5 five five itself. Uh, Escape to the Wild is a pretty standard include as well. 5 mana. Uh, exile the top 5 cards of your deck. Uh, you can play any card exiled this way until the end of your next turn. And then you can also play an additional land. So very, very powerful. Uh, obviously Beanstalk Giant, a huge, huge bomb in this uh, deck, but also helps us pull out lands, which is very good. Uh, and then Shark Typhoon is a two of here. So this gives us double uh, value off of all of these, you know, little uh, adventure spells. So very, very good. Uh, in terms of lands, we are at 24, uh, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can kind of see those there, and they're in the description below. Uh, as far as our sideboard goes, we have one Unsummon, one Shadow Spear to kind of gain us some life gain advantage. Uh, Soul Guide Lantern is a really nice way to kind of deal with the opponent's graveyard. Depending on the deck, that's very, very good. Uh, Return to Nature as just a catch-all, like Destroy Target Artifact Enchantment or Exile a Card from the Graveyard. A good little catch-all there. Mythos of Aluna, so we can copy uh, specific spells if we would like to, or, uh, excuse me, permanents. Uh, Song of Creation, this is kind of an interesting one, but it is a nice little advantage engine. If you kind of just are spinning your wheels or you're kind of burnt out from the top decking, you can do that, or you can use this and hopefully get a lot of advantage in one single turn, which is awesome. Uh, our fourth Escape to the Wilds is in here. We've got a Sublime Epiphany just to be able to deal with whatever the opponent's doing uh, as a bit of an insurance policy. Uh, Ember Cleave is a quick way to end the game. Uh, one Kiora Best the Sea God. This is just a really nice way to end the game as well. It gives it's it takes a couple turns, but it's very good. Uh, two Ugin the Spirit Dragon, of course, just a phenomenal bomb. Uh, absolutely happy to have this in, and this is one of the biggest new cards from the the core set. Uh, the Great Hinge here is a way to gain some life and also just buff out some creatures. Uh, Foss's Intervention, and then Castle Vantress uh, for a Scry Engine. So. That's what we're looking at. Uh, we're going to give it a shot. Like I said, I don't normally play Teamer Adventures, so um, th there's a bit of a learning curve for this deck for me. Um, I'm going to do the best I can, obviously, and we'll do, uh, or we'll see how it goes. All right. Let's see. Um, for those of you wondering behind me, this is some of these are all binders, which are like set sorted binders. Up here, we've got proxies, uh, and then behind that is all my, like, random sealed product. Um, I just assume that I'm going to get some questions about that. I may not, but hey, it's there. Um, and obviously, we're still working on the setup a little bit, so we may get better lighting and things like that as we go along, but that's okay. All right. Well, hmm. Um, hmm. What do I like more here? I think I like just getting this out. Um, this is not a deck that I'm, like I said, really well versed in. Uh, and really, I should have played that Fable Passage there. That was a bit of a mistake. But um, I do really like this deck. Uh, 
I'm actually very happy to block here. That gets rid of that threat. Um, that's one where they can start to pull out a lot of things, uh, and that's obviously kind of a, a hindrance for us. Um, so, and this is why I, I definitely messed up a little bit in that I should have pulled a, uh, a green source first and then done this, but that's okay. Um, what do we want to do? I think we actually passed with Brazen Borrower up. <clears throat> that might be incorrect, but we'll see. We will see. Also, I had to really play with the mic placement, and it's been very tricky. Um, let's see what the opponent wants to do here. Okay. Uh, I think we'll end up just bouncing the Grim Dancer. Um, that's the highest like tempo play that we can do. Just because this obviously costs the most mana. I mean, it's pretty straightforward there. Uh. Let's throw this out. Uh, let's go ahead, fetch here. We'll get a red source. Uh, we do kind of want to spread out our mana a good bit here. And then we'll just play this as a blocker and then be able to draw a card here. Ooh, that's very nice. Um, that just gives us a nice little blocker. This obviously can't attack until we have a 1-1 one -one out, but, um, or excuse me, if it does attack, it's only because of this, but, um, yeah, that's going to require a removal spell, so that's fine. Not going to block here. Alright, so, what do we do now? So we can do this. Get rid of that. Uh, which I do think is the right play. Uh, let's play this out, and then let's play this out. Now this is going to obviously draw us a card again. Uh, that is a phenomenal draw. Um, and I will actually attack here. Chances are I'm not going to block with the innkeeper. It's not really a card you want to block with, if you can help it. Uh, just because it gives you so much card advantage, it's phenomenal. Um, okay, pretty good. Sure. Alright, so. Uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and search out. Um, what do we want? I think we'll get a red source here. Yeah, let's do this. We'll get a green. Let's do this. Get one of them out. And go ahead and get this out. Alright. So now we've got a ton of mana. Um, and some just really strong stuff out. Uh, they, I mean, eventually we're going to need to start attacking here. But we're just not in a comfortable place to do that yet. Um, so we're holding off right now. But... Uh, with the Brazen Borrower, we're, we're able to kind of swing in in the air, which is not something that this deck is very well tooled out uh, to deal with. So, Yep, uh, worth noting, they do have Castle Lockthwain on the field, so they will be able to just start drawing cards at some point. Oh, sorry for frame rates also. Um, hopefully it's not terrible. Uh, do we want to just do this? I think yes. Okay. That was kind of what we were hoping for. We needed a Lucky Clover pretty bad there. Um, let's go ahead and get another Innkeeper out. Uh, we'll play this. Uh, I'm going to put that on the bottom. Uh, I do really like it, but I'm going to put it on the bottom for now. And do we attack in? Again, I think not quite yet. Um, eventually, they're just... I mean, they... They've got another one of the, the uh, Whisper squads that they can pull out, but they don't have, like, a ton that outpowers us. Um, and so I'm kind of holding off on it. I don't know if that's correct. Again, this is one of those situations where I'm just not 100% sure. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty good. It's not really the end of the world, but that's pretty good. Okay, so we can just play Sharknado, which I really like. And I think we are going to do that. This just gives us so much advantage. <laughs> like, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, let's do this. So we get two lands off of this. Uh, we will get a green. And we will get a blue, maybe. Um, and then we get to play a Love Struck Beast. All right. So, I'm just going to attack with this and see what they do. Why not? 
Uh, they do have just kind of infinite blockers, so maybe this isn't the best idea. Wow, our um, our network is not doing so well at the moment, so I apologize. Uh, we haven't had issues with that in a while, so that's kind of surprising, but we'll maybe swap networks here in a minute. Uh, we could have left up a red here if we had wanted to, but like, they don't have artifacts. Cauldron Familiar is not a thing anymore. Okay. Arguably, this does more harm than good because they do get to block here. Um, but, you know, it's fine. Really, we should just be attacking with flyers. We should never be attacking with uh, these little guys here. Just because they come back. With Luris on the field, they come back. If we get a Bone Crusher Giant and can deal with Luris, things highly, highly change. But um, technically, that was a bad attack. Again, not playing perfectly here, but that's fine. Uh, let's see. Sure. They got plenty of stuff to play from there. I mean, they only get to pick one of these, but like they can pull this back play it and then also play one of these two uh arguably this i mean definitely the serrated scorpion is better but yeah okay hmm that's an interesting one yeah i don't I don't know that I love this attack. Um, I'm just going to do this. They gain three, but, like, we have infinite blockers, essentially, as well. So, like, I'm not tremendously worried about that. Um, all right. Well, let's play an innkeeper. Seems like a good start. Uh, let's play this. Draw ourselves three cards, which is pretty good. Um... Really would like to get a Bone Crusher Giant just to be able to deal with this, to be honest. Um, let's draw another three. There we go. Ooh. That's even better. So we could do this. Get a little 2-2 two -two Shark. Then we can Bone Crusher three things. So one... Oh, and we also get <laughs> Shark Typhoon Trigger. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So we're going to try and kill Luris. And we're probably just going to kill these Whisper Squads. Or, no, I think it might be better to try and get rid of this. That Murderous Rider is frustrating. Um, just because it has lifelink. All right. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Soul attack for one. <laughs> Woo. All right. Uh, you might be wondering also why we're not playing the Beanstalk Giant. Uh, Beanstalk Giant's very, very good. Don't get me wrong. But, um, in this situation, it's not the most helpful thing in the world either. It's very strong, uh, and so it would quickly threaten them. Um, and here we actually kind of will have to play it, but they, uh have a situation where it's not necessarily the best thing in the world either um let's play it we draw three this is where this deck just has so much advantage um because it just does so much it's ridiculous <laughs> uh well that's pretty good um i think let's bounce a bunch of stuff let's bounce you Bounce you. Alright, there we go. Got the win. Um, also, I may... Let's see. I'm going to see what network we're on. We might switch networks really quickly. Sorry, guys. There we go. Alright, let's jump back in. Um, I really like this deck, though. That was really, really sweet. That worked out well. Um, yeah, new setup. Every time I restart this computer, it jumps to a separate network, and I need to tell it to forget that network, but I always forget to tell it to forget, so here we are. <laughs> um, 
So regardless, you get to see me reload Arena. I could edit this out, but I'm not going to uh, because it's a busy day and I don't have time, to be honest. Um, hopefully that will help the frame rate issue, though. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully, uh, also just want to announce today is the last day to get August rewards for Patreon. Uh, so if you would like to uh, sign up for those, you certainly still can. We'll be sending out uh, probably either this evening or tomorrow morning uh, just to make sure that we get everybody. Um, but I just want to let you know those are this month's rewards were really, really good. I'm excited for next month's as well. The patrons have voted. They already know what, what is coming. Uh, and so I'm really excited to share that with you guys very soon. We've got just a tremendous lineup of proxies coming lately uh, that I could not be happier about. Um, it's taken some time to get them out because, like, it's just been busy. Like, work on top of, you know, a million other things. It's just ugh, taking too much time. But uh, very, very happy with a lot of the, uh, the, the proxies that have come out recently, and I hope that you guys are. Uh, I think they're quite good. Sure. All right. Well, they got our land. Uh, do we play Lucky Clover? I kind of think so. Um, I don't know if this is going to really work out the way we'd like, but we're going to do the best we can. Um, looks like they might be short on land, so that's a start. Uh, let's see. Ooh, they got a Bone Crusher. Well, that's super bad for us. Yeah. Okay, so we can play land. We can do this and get two lands out, uh, which do come into play untapped, worth noting. Um, so I think we'll do that. One of them has to be blue. Uh, and we'll get, I think, a green. Uh, yeah, and we pass. So now we're going to bounce as much as we can after they attack. Yep. That was kind of interesting. Why would they have done that before? That was, I think, wrong. Um, so they might just be able to kill us, worth noting. Um, and we are not doing anything significant. Yep. So we do get to cycle this, but that's not going to be good enough. We get two little 1-1s. One Maybe that's enough. <laughs> um, no, it's definitely not. Yeah, we just lose. All right, well, that was really quick. Um, in those matchups, Bone Crusher Giant, it's kind of Bone Crusher Giant or Bust, uh, in my opinion, or just a really nice Brazen Borrower. Um, but everything has haste, so it just makes it really tricky. Um, but that's okay. Let's jump into our third and final game uh, and see how we do. Also, this setup feels really weird because I'm so used to my normal setup I will say or the previous setup and so it's like I'm looking here now not here and it's just strange I just have to get used to it um all right do we keep this uh yeah I think we can keep um we're kind of banking on these love struck beasts to really do a lot but um ooh, that's nice too that's very nice. Uh, that's just going to give us ways to, to deal with whatever they're doing. If they play Stomping Ground, they could very well just be Gruul. Um, in which case, having a Bone Crusher Giant, tip top. That's what we want. Um, Alright. Good card. Um, I mean, we do this. It's not great. But, like, I think that's the best thing we can or we should do. Also, frame rates are still garbage. Our network is, like, terrible right now. What is this? I feel like I'm back in the old days. All right. 
That was a fairly good turn, though. I mean, we were able to deal with a very problematic creature, uh, as well as get a couple little 1-1s out that give us, you know, pretty good stuff to do next turn. That noise is very annoying. Um, so let's just do this. Uh, and I think we'll just do this. We could play this. I don't really know which is correct, but here we are. No attacks. All right. God, these frame rates are terrible, guys. I am very sorry. Our network really is struggling at the moment, unfortunately. Very good. We really need blue mana for Brazen Bar over here. Wow. Well, that's good. Yeah, dude. I'm kind of glad I didn't play Lovestruck Beast, to be honest. Does this have Trample? Block the four. I feel like that's probably okay here. Um, this is very helpful. All right, let's do this. Getting a blue. Getting a green. Play that. Um. And in that instance, I think we just pass. We're gonna attack. Not gonna be blocking with these. So now we brazen borrow this. Perfect. That's great. Just double target this. Does that mean it fizzles? Yeah, it does fizzle. Okay, that's fine. Um, we kind of assume that, so that's cool. And now we need to kill it. Alright. That was fairly nice. Um, let's just play a beanstalk giant. We'll attack for one. I am so sorry, these frame rates are like absolutely terrible right now. Um, wow, it's really bad. Get to kill that. Uh, we'll continue setup. Red. We'll get a blue. Um, play that out. So really what we should have done is played the Beanstalk Giant uh, first to have dealt more damage. So that was a bit of a mistake as well. I'm seeing a lot of mistakes as we go through this. So I'm hoping that in the second video, uh, if the frame rate isn't quite so bad, uh, you guys can, you know, see a much better or cleaner game, um, but we'll see. Sure. It's very good, but not quick enough, I don't believe. If only that was enchantment. Um... I'm actually happy to hear to attack with both, because they have to block one of it, of them. Uh, we could have attacked with everything there, to be honest, and gotten them down to one. I'm gonna do this. That way, no matter what, we still have the Beanstalk Giant back, uh, which is obviously a huge threat. Alright. I mean, we pretty much have this, I believe, but you never know. Um... Yeah, I think we have this. I'm really, really upset about the frames, though. That's frustrating. Um, I hope that we can get that fixed very quickly. All right, there we go. Um, all right, so two wins with Teamer Adventures. I mean, we all know that Teamer Adventures is a good deck, but because we haven't really played it much on the channel, I thought now would be a good time to. Um, so I'm really happy that we're we're doing okay with it, despite quite a number of misplays. Um, I'm I'm missing little things here and there that I should not be, 
Um, and so I certainly hope that we can better that as we go through. But uh, regardless, still really enjoy the deck. So we will, of course, be jumping into a second video. Hopefully the frames will be a little better for you guys. Again, I'm very sorry. Um, this isn't necessarily anything to do with the setup. I think this is a lot to do with um, the, the network in the area right now. Um, we were actually doing very, very well, and then it dipped this weekend. So this is not new, um, but I certainly hope we can get it fixed. So regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoy the, the little setup. That's uh, kind of fun. It's a subtle flex, I suppose. But I uh, really do appreciate all the support, guys. Thank you so much, and I will see you for part two very soon.